Hey everyone, welcome back in our tutorial on turning a Raspberry Pi into a personal server. In the first part, I kind of left a few things undone. I didn't get into configuring your Raspberry Pi and that was not intentional. And so this time we're going to get into that and how to configure it. And especially if you're uh, following along with the Raspberry Pi 3, which is the base for this whole uh, tutorial series, um, we're going to have to connect to the Wi-Fi. Now, that's a lot easier if you're using the um, GUI, but since we've chose to go with a Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspbian Lite version, there is no GUI, but yet we somehow have to connect to the Wi-Fi. So we're going to go through all of that. So to get started, what we're going to do, you're going to type in sudo raspy config dash config. And uh, I'll put that on the screen there, how you can spell that. And the first thing will, it'll bring us into a menu. And if you remember in the first tutorial, I talked about changing the user password for the default user. Well, lo and behold, here's how you do it. It's right there in the menu. And I didn't even realize that whenever I had uh, talked about it or else I would have suggested this. So um, we can go ahead and do that and click on that. And it'll prompt you. If you notice down there in the bottom left corner, it'll prompt you to enter a new password. So go ahead and enter that password and then re or verify that by retyping it. And so then we'll go ahead and take a look at the boot options. And uh, let me see. No, we don't need anything in here. You can play with that if you want, but there's nothing in there. Uh, we can go ahead and set our locale. Now this is pretty important, uh, making sure that you get all the uh, right configuration that your keyboard set up right and, and all that good stuff. So... Um, is by by default mine was set to Great Britain English Great Britain well I'm not in Great Britain so I'm gonna go ahead and set that to uh, English US okay and I went ahead and unchecked the one for Great Britain and all right select English US Okay, I'm going to go back in that menu again, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, set my time zone. Select my location, then I'm in central time zone in the United States, and set my Wi-Fi country. I'm not sure what this is used for, but nah, why not? Okay. If you're using the Raspberry Pi camera module, that's where you could you would enable that module at. Uh, we're not doing that for now. Um, overscan. Now, if you noticed, my this video has a black border all the way around it, and what that is, that's the overscan. And I, I can't explain it to you. I'm not going to get into the technical details, but let's just say it, it's putting a black border, and we don't want that. Um, if you don't have the black border, then the overscan is fine. If you do and you want to get rid of it, there you go. This is how you turn that off, get rid of it. Now, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to change until I reboot. And as you can see there, I, I was kind of confused as to what, wh it, whether it was on or not. Okay, so we, we can go ahead and change the host name. This is going to be how it appears on your Wi-Fi network. I'm just going to go ahead and type uh, my Pi server. You don't have to do this. You can leave it like it is, but uh, just to make sure that it is unique and distinguished, we know that that's it. It's a good idea to go ahead and turn on your SSH server uh, because, again, we're going to be connecting to it remotely more than anything, especially if we have a headless server. So once it's standing alone there, you're going to need to use the SSH and I'll get more into that and uh, I'll try to put a link in the de description and kind of go more into that and in, uh, at a later time but okay so we're gonna go ahead and reboot and this is going to apply all the new settings
Okay, next we're going to set up the uh, Wi-Fi access. And there's only one, this is actually really simple, there's only one place to do that. And we go, uh, we're going to open it in our nano text editor. editor. And so we're going to type sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash wpa underscore supplicant and under uh, forward slash wpa supplicant dot c c o n f and uh now i've already been editing this so uh i've got extra content in my my file but uh what you want to do you want to go down there at the bottom of the file you should only have the first three lines or something like that um you're going to want to add this network part and uh the spaces the spacing and everything is is very critical you don't want to add extra spaces in between uh in between that and I don't know if the tab is important you do tab out and then equal sign double quotes the uh, SSID is the name of your network that you're connecting to I've set this one up as a temporary uh, one for the sake of this demo um, now the one thing that I had to do some digging to figure out was you you really need to add this part the key underscore managent uh, MGMT equals WPA dash PSK. Now I had the hardest time connecting to the Wi-Fi network because that was missing in the instructions that I was looking at. And after I added this and then corrected my spacing, um, it connected just fine. And yeah, you definitely want to remove the space there. I had space there as well. Everything's double quoted like you're supposed to. You can just uh, control X to exit out type yes press enter to save your changes and that'll take you back to the command prompt then we go sudo if down w l a n zero and then i'm going to type sudo if up w l a n zero and that just brings it online that and if you don't get any error messages or anything like that then it means it's successfully loaded and then you can check what we're looking for now you type in uh, if config and you're going to be looking for the your WLAN0 adapter and you're looking for a local IP address now you can see mine hasn't had a chance to load yet uh, so you just give it a few seconds because it has to connect to the router alright we type it again and if you look real closely there you see I've got the INET address 192.168.1.11 and that means I have successfully connected to my Wi-Fi network uh, because the uh, the router has uh, issued me an IP address so I should be connected to the internet now now the way you can test it I'm just going to use uh, ping real quick and I'm going to ping google.com and as you can see it's getting a return I see the address the uh, IP address of google.com and so yeah we're connected to the internet and to stop this you can just press uh, control C all right And then we're going to go ahead and run uh, app get update. Now this is going to update our source list. And this is important. You need to run this, uh, especially before installing new software and stuff like that. You want, to, uh, you want to go ahead and run this to make sure that you're using the latest repositories and that you're running the latest software. Now this is not going to update the software. This just updates, uh, updates your sources and make sure that they reconciling everything okay now that that you've updated your sources you type sudo app get and then upgrade and now this is going to, it's going to tell me that, okay, I've got some new updates. Go ahead and type yes if I want to continue. And this is going to actually update our Raspbian software to the latest version. So this is how you do like, uh, if you're used to Windows, you do Windows upgrade or whatever. Well, this is how you do it on uh, Debine, any, pretty much any Debine based uh, um, Linux version. You know, Ubuntu is the same way. Um, 
And so it's real simple, you know, and this just make sure that everything's up to date. Just kind of run through this step periodically. If you want to make sure that you're running the the latest and greatest versions of your software. All right. Mine took a bit longer than I expected um, and had a pretty major update. It updated the kernel and everything, which is like the whole system. So as small as the, as limited as the things were that needed, uh, that there were to update, it still was a pretty big update. So it took a little longer and I've, I've fast forwarded and sped it up. So, um, well, anyways, now we're done. Your system's updated and it's configured and we're ready to move on. So now you're connected to the internet. You know how to connect via Wi-Fi now, via the command line. That was really hard information for me to find that was accurate uh, and actually worked. So hopefully that helped you out. Anyway, so that should conclude this part of it. And no more tutorials on configuration and just playing, you know, screwing around with the operating system. Now we're ready to really get uh, dive into setting up our own server, installing the apps that or the packages that are going to make it cool. And anyway, so thanks a lot for watching and be sure to like, subscribe, share, and I will see you next time.